Five. So we're going to go to the start menu and you're going to go to computer and on your P drive, I'm using D in my case, you're going to make a new folder and you're going to label it with your last name underscore fall 2015. Okay, inside that folder, you're going to make a 2550 folder. Inside the 2550 folder, you're going to make a work folder and a source folder. Okay. The source folder is going to be everything that you kind of get as reference. As we start to get further into the class and you kind of like are pushing things to be a little bit more realistic, you're going to start to save videos or find videos or use images or whatever to get that. Um, it's going to become really important when we start doing things. Nope. When we start doing things that are um, like smoke or fire or whatever, because you're going to have to look at it and you're going to have to analyze how these things are moving, right? So you have to figure out. Here's a little cigarette smoke. It's not simply like in your mind, like okay, it's just smoke, just going up like that. But in order to get the cool cigarette smoke. You can see how there's like little wisps and like these little areas that are like twisted inside there. So that's where you're going to get these image references and you're just going to save them and use them um, to set things up. Okay, there's a cool one there too. All right, so you'll use those. You may also use videos. So you may go to the video area and uh, blowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of songs called blowing smoke. Swirling smoke. There we go. Those are swirling smoke. One. Okay. So we may find a video of swirling smoke that we could use to reference. Uh, there was one video that I watched that was really interesting because before they even got into doing anything at all, the guy went over the entire um, theory, or not theory, their physics behind how smoke gets colored. So if it's dry smoke it's going to be one color if it's wet smoke it's going to be another color if it's an oil fire it'll be a different color and then how these things change throughout the course of the fire and the smoke and all this other stuff so it was uh, pretty interesting okay so anything that's like that that you're using for reference that just goes inside your source folder um, your work folder is all the stuff that you're going to be working on for the class so as we do stuff today we'll save it into the work folder all right so let's close that folder we're set done with that and then we can just open up Maya 2016. And you'll have to do a search or go to the Autodesk to find it. It may say, do you want to create your default or copy old? Just create default preferences. So once we have Maya open, um, if you haven't used Maya in a while, it's time to go back and start playing with it, okay? So don't get caught up right now if you're watching this and you can't keep up because you just haven't played in Maya for three months or four months or six years, just take notes at your own time. Try to do that because you're not going to be able to keep up if you can't, uh, if you haven't played with it in a while. Okay? So I'm going to close the highlight what's new at startup. We don't need that. And then. Um, we're just going to set up a couple things. So I'm going to go down to the little running man in the bottom right hand corner where it says animation preferences. And I just need to verify a couple things. <clears throat> uh, number one, I want to verify that my playback speed is set to play every frame. Okay. Whenever we deal with something dynamic, Maya calculates it per frame. Okay. So when our ball is going to drop, falling down. Um, it calculates where it's at at frame one, where it's at at frame two, where it's at at frame three. Okay. If this playback speed is set to something else like real time, real time will sometimes skip frames. Okay. So it'll go frame one, frame eight, frame seven, and Maya gets confused as to what's supposed to happen. So we need it to play every frame so it just slowly falls down and then eventually it'll be faster. Okay.
Now our max playback speed, we want this to be set to real time. Okay. Now you'll see that our real time is 24 frames per second. And the reason this is, um, is just because if we go to our settings up here at the top, this film settings is 24 frames per second. Okay. So I'm going to set this to, um, well, we'll leave it at 24. It's not going to matter. Okay. So we'll leave it at 24. Um, we can always go back in post and change that time setting. Okay. We can always make it 60 frames per second to make it a little bit slower or make it a little bit faster or whatever. Okay. So we'll leave that 24, but we could change it if we wanted to. Also, let's take note of the um, increments, the units here are centimeters. Okay. So as we start building our scenes, if we're building in centimeters, things are going to function a bit different than if they were in feet or meters or miles, right? So when they build an actual building that's going to fall down and they want that to be realistic, they literally build the building to scale-ish, roughly to scale, okay? So in that case, they would probably build it to yard or to foot or to meters or whatever so that it's to scale, all right? The physics are built in a way to mimic the real world. But if you build an entire building this big and you throw a ball at it and it hits it like that, it's going to interact like it would normally. Okay. So we're not going to go full blown scale, but we'll go pretty big. Okay. Um, centimeters, degrees. Okay. Uh, let's go down to undo. The undo cue is 50. So if you think that you need more than 50, punch in more than 50. I'm fine with 50. Shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I wouldn't go any higher than 200 though. Okay. So 200 is the max uh, for you. 50 is kind of like just a good starting point. And then we can hit save. Okay. Uh, let's make sure that bullet is loaded. So bullet is a separate program. It's a plugin. We need to make sure bullet is loaded before it starts to work, before we can get it to work. So under window, settings and preferences, plugin manager, you will find one called bullet.mll. And you'll see on mine, it's not checked. I need this to be checked. So I'm going to check bullet loaded and bullet auto load. Okay, there should be an alphabetical order. It's weird how they do it because it's like lowercase than uppercase, or it used to be that, but it's not anymore. Okay, so once bullet is loaded, you can hit close. All right, in previous versions of Maya, bullet was then on all the screens. Yes, sir. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an object. Bullet works with polygons, okay? We do not want to use NURBS for this. We want to use polygons. So we're just going to create a polygon sphere. And we're just going to raise it above the ground. Okay, so I just literally just pulled it straight up above the ground. Doesn't matter where, just somewhere above the ground. Okay. So then once we have it above the ground, we can turn this into a bullet object and have it then start interacting with different properties. So under the effects, so if I go to my menu set and I change this to FX, I'll get my bullet menu. Okay. Now we'll cover a couple of these things. So we created a sphere, pulled it up above, and now we're going to go to the bullet menu. There's a couple uh, definitions that we're going to focus on. Record that. Have the ball selected bullet, active rigid body, and now these turn green here. And then if I hit play, play, we'll see that the ball does fall straight down. Okay. Because bullet has an automatic gravity built into it, it'll automatically start to read gravity and start to pull it down. Yes, ma'am. In some dynamic engines, making it active doesn't necessarily give it movement, okay? In, in real flow, I can make particles and the particles will just go out. I can make an object active and it'll just sit there. It's not until I add gravity that stuff starts to interact with it. Now think about something if this was like an outer space, I may not want 
gravity in here, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. I would want it to have some sort of pull maybe, but not necessarily down or not necessarily you know up or right or left. So I can change all these properties. So under window, I'm gonna go to outliner. Okay, and you'll see that when we created bullet, we got another object in our scene, which is the bullet solver. And this is gonna be a common thread throughout all of your dynamic engines that you play with, is that you, your objects will become part of that system and it'll create a solver for that system, okay? And the solver is kind of like the orchestrator or the, what's the guy called? Conductor, thank you. The conductor for this dynamic symphony. It's a beautiful turn of phrase. So the bullet solver, if I click on that and go to the attribute editor, hit control A, and pull the attribute editor off. I don't like that. All right. So inside this bullet solver, there's a bunch of different things that are inside here. Some of them we play with, some of them we just leave alone. Um, number one is uh, enable simulation. This is an important one for lots of reasons. Sometimes we have 15 different simulations going on, but we're only focused on one, okay? So there's no point in running those other 14 so we can just disable them, okay? And all this does, if I click this off, is you'll see I hit play and nothing happens. Okay, so that's all that does is just disable calculating any of that business. The start time is also important. Sometimes we have 15 things happening at the same time and we don't want them to. I want a thing to hit this building, boom, and then I fly down a little bit and let something else hit that building and boom, okay? So I can change my start time of my simulation to a different frame. And what that means is that it won't start interacting until that frame. Okay, and again, these are common things that you'll see throughout different Dynamics engines. Uh, no idea what split impulse is, we'll just skip that one. <laughs> uh, the next one is the internal fixed frame rate, and it says 60 hertz, okay? Um, basically, what this is going to do is just make it a bit more accurate. In this case, there's nothing really going on, it's just falling, okay? But we'll see where we're going to need to change this um, in a little bit, okay? Um, doo -doo -doo, we'll get to that. Here's ground plane. So let's click on the ground plane and hit play. Okay. So what did ground plane do? Uh, we click the box here. We went to here and we went to that. Okay. On collider properties, this is where we're choosing the kind of object that it's colliding with. Okay. So in this case, it's chosen by default a box but I could also make it a sphere. And if I were to zoom in, you can kind of see this like green, now it's white, line around it. That's the collision sphere. So it just creates a very simplified version of our sphere to use for colliding. Okay, and if we hit play again, we should get a different simulation. Because we chose a different colliding object, we're getting a different simulation. So what happens is this thing falls straight down, it hits the ground perfectly, and it does not move. If this was the real world, there might be like some grit on the ground, there might be some grit on the ball, it may hit and just kind of like roll this way or roll that way or whatever. It doesn't do that in here because the world is pretty clean. But we can, if I hit stop and I rewind this, we can adjust some of these properties here like restitution, okay? All right, so if we wanted the ball to bounce, we increase the restitution. And now we got a bouncy ball. Okay, now again, we're not getting a roll with this because it's still in that perfect world of not hitting something and rolling. It's just kind of like hitting it perfectly and bouncing. If we had a stack of boxes, a stack, yeah, that's right, a stack of boxes, and we let it fall, they would fall perfectly on top of each other and line up. They wouldn't like tumble over or anything like that. Okay? On the ball, right about there. Okay? Another one is friction. So we'll write that down too. So a lot of these settings will only go up to one. Even if we typed in something like five, you'll see that it only goes up to one. 
Um, so don't use one as, or don't think of one as like, you know, I'm capped out so I can't go any further. You still have that zero to one to play with where we can set this to be like 0.125, okay? So we still have that whole range that's inside there, okay? Um, we have damping as well, and damping is going to be an important on here, I have an initial velocity. There's three values. It's always X, Y, Z, okay? So the first one is X. So I'm gonna put in like 50. And then when I rewind this and hit play, what we should see is the ball moving in the X direction. Okay, so that's how we throw the ball. Okay, then it's still gonna hit the ground and it's gonna bounce. Okay, so the initial velocity is 50. It's usually, there's the info, or there's the input, and then it just stays on there. So there have been a couple of times where I've used the impulse one. Okay, now the angular velocity is rotation. So if we had an object that we wanted to also spin as it was going, that's where we could add some initial angular velocity and get it to spin. On the sphere, we're probably not going to see anything like that happen. Okay. Now you'll see that my sphere is actually, I stopped it in the middle. It is rotated a bit, okay? So as it hit the ground, that friction kicked on and then it started to spin because it has friction. So friction was able to stop it or start it spinning. If there was no friction, it literally would have just bounced and just kept going just like that, okay? With friction, it bounces and then starts to tumble. A lot of it becomes more apparent as we start to play with these and tweak and uh, mess around. All right. So let's make a new scene. File new scene. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to build something that we can knock down. Okay. So the key to this is accuracy and paying attention to what we are doing. It's very easy to F this up and it doesn't work. Okay. So that by making sure that we just be a little bit anal about how we have this thing set up. So I'm going to make a cube, just a polygon cube. And for this one, keep it boring, okay? While we're playing with this, while you're going through the phases of just understanding exactly what we're doing, keep it boring. After you understand it and you're like, got it, I know what to do. Make the objects, duplicate, make sure they're not stacked on top of each other. Then you can get more creative. Then you can start to create your own shapes using cylinders and cubes and spheres and whatever else, okay? So I want this guy, this cube, to sit right on the ground. So I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't grab my thing and just say, it's about good, okay? What I wanna do is I know how big this cube is. This cube is one unit by one unit by one unit, okay? I know that because if I come over here to my widths, it's one by one by one. So if I wanted to move this, because it looks like it's cut in half, right? If I want to move that so that the bottom is sitting on the ground, how far up should I move that? About half. Exactly half, actually. So we're going to go to translate Y and set that to be 0.5. Okay? So now our translate Y for that cube is exactly 0.5. So then I'm going to duplicate it. So I hit Control-D. And how far up do I move the next cube? 1.5. Okay, because that'll be one unit, 0.5. Okay. And then I can hold down shift and hit D, and hopefully it'll work. It'll just duplicate straight up. Okay. All right, everyone good so far? All right, so now let's create a sphere, polygon sphere, and we'll pull it back and we'll lift it up and kind of center it a little bit, you know, of where we would want this thing to hit through the wall. Okay, this is the launch point of where it's going to be projected from. So we just kind of pull it back. And this doesn't have to be accurate because this is not relying on anything else in the scene.
Okay, so we have a sphere, it's off to the side, okay? So now what we should have done first is make our project. It doesn't matter, we'll just make it now and then we can save our stuff. So under file, we'll go to project window. We'll go to the new button and we'll call it your last name, whatever your last name is. And then um, bullet playing, okay? So we know this is our first bullet project Then we're just playing around with it. Um, for the location, you're going to find that work folder that you set up on the P drive. Okay, so find your work folder on the P drive, set it to that. You've named it, whatever your last name is, bullet playing. You can hit accept and then save your scene. I'm just going to call this bullet underscore zero one. Okay. It's always good to save your stuff before you do anything dynamic to it. Because once it's dynamic, sometimes it's very difficult to unmake it dynamic. Okay. So I always save it as something else, make it dynamic, and then I can verify that things are working and then save as to a completely different name. Okay, so you always have something to go back to. It just makes the world a lot easier. All right, so number one thing we need to do. <clears throat> this sphere right here, we need to make that active, right? Because we're going to launch it. So we go to bullet, and we say create an active rigid body. Okay, now it did come in with that um, box around it, so we can hit control A go to the rigid body attributes and change that back to a sphere. Okay. If we were to hit play, we don't need to, but just so you can see, it's going to just fall straight down. Okay. So now that is an active body. It's just going to fall straight down. Now we haven't projected it. If we launched it and it flew at this stuff here, nothing would happen. It would just go through it, okay? Because right now the sphere is bullet. The blocks are just random blocks inside of Maya. They have no dynamic properties to them currently. All right. Now imagine, just for a minute, that we grabbed all these cubes here and we went to the bullet and we made those active, okay? That's going to kind of screw things up because when we want to edit something, we have to go through every single one of those cubes and edit their properties individually. Okay? So we don't want to do that. We don't want to go to bullet and then go to this. We want to do what's called a rigid set. Okay? So go grab all the cubes and go to bullet and do a rigid set. Okay, now what that does is it takes all those objects and it makes them part of one big rigid object. Okay, so imagine we're shattering something. All those objects are part of that rigid set that are making it do what it needs to do. All right, so now if we rewind it and play it, you see everything just falls. Okay, so where do we fix that so that it doesn't just fall? Ground. So we have to go to the outliner, right? We have to find our bullet solver, go to the attribute editor, and turn on the ground plane. <clears throat> You'll see that the boxes pretty much stay there. So what's the next step in order to get this thing to do something cool? Launch the ball at it. Okay. So we grab the ball, we go find the bullet rigid shape, we go to our initial velocity and we launch it in whichever direction that is. I believe it's the Z direction. Okay. Now mine is actually the negative Z direction. My positive blue Z direction is facing that way, so I have to go negative in my Z direction to get it to launch at that thing. Okay, now we have an interaction happening. Now we have something cool happening where this is actually hitting it 
and we can start to play with the numbers. Okay, so let's go to, let me stop it and rewind it, the mass of this, and I'll just crank it up to 100. <laughs> and it just flies right through it, okay? Sometimes on these settings, you can't be dainty with it. You can't say, well, let's see what it looks like at 2. Let's see what it looks like at 3, okay? Sometimes you have to really kick it up to see what that setting is going to do, and then you can kind of find that sweet spot of where you it's doing what you want it to do. Okay? Now what I don't like is it looks like that these boxes, and it might just be the viewport, but it looks like the boxes are moving before the sphere even gets there, which is kind of silly because it shouldn't be doing that. What it should be doing is just staying perfectly still, it hits it, and then everything falls down, okay? And we could even change this. I don't even like how this is hitting. Let me just scoot this over. Um, if you move the sphere at all, make sure you rewind it to the beginning, okay? And I'm going to add a little bit of negative X in here, too. Oh, so close. There we go. Okay. So you can shoot this thing not just straight all the time, but we can shoot it at an angle by giving it a little bit of Z direction and a little bit of X direction, and that'll push it on that angle to hit it. Okay. So that way you're not always stuck with perfectly straight stuff getting hit. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to make it fall or make it stay still and then fall. Okay. So let's rewind it. Um, if I click on these cubes out here, you'll see that they don't have a bullet uh, tools, right? There's no bullet stuff for these specific tools. This says bullet solved, but there's nothing to edit. There's nothing to edit here. Okay. Once we make a rigid set, it's edited somewhere else, okay? It's edited on the solver. So I'm going to open up my outliner again, go down to my solver, and then in my solver, there's a tab that says um, bullet rigid set initial state. And inside here, this is where I can set the initial conditions. And the initial condition I want to set is to say that it's initially sleeping, okay? So I went to my outliner, I grabbed the bullet solver, I went to the bullet rigid set initial state, and I'm gonna tell it that it's initially sleeping. Glue shapes, look at that one. What do you think that does, just out of curiosity? It keeps objects together <clears throat> until they're interact until they have enough force on them to break them apart okay so imagine like you have blocks of concrete some of those are going to be like stuck together but the ones that get hit first and the hardest are going to break apart all right so we can turn on glue shapes and then play and now instead of everything being one you know individual cubes you'll see that some of these are actually going to stick together like that <laughs> until it falls and then boom. <laughs> okay now we can control the glue breaking threshold and that's what's going to break them apart earlier okay so less force will be needed to break them apart uh, the maximum constraints per body is how many points it's kind of constraining itself to uh, but a lot of these you can just kind of play with them and, and see what they do now, one thing that's kind of annoying is that it's hitting, and right when this thing is about to fall, it starts over. <laughs> okay? So, when we deal with dynamics, we're dealing with a timeline. So, we always have to add more frames when the cool stuff is just out of reach. So, I'm going to go 600 frames in order to see this thing actually fall. And what probably happens is it falls and then breaks apart. <sighs> Look at that. That's awesome. Okay, and then eventually it stops moving because it has its own properties. Now there's also stuff inside here for these objects. You'll see that their friction is set to 0.5. Their restitution is set to 0.5. If I turn the friction on the ball, I'm sorry, the restitution on the ball up and the friction, the restitution on this up, 
we may get a little bit more bounciness happening inside here. Okay, and we would again get different results. So I grab the ball, I'm gonna turn its, where did I miss it? Impulse, impulse, there it is, restitution. Up. Okay, and you definitely see we get a different result based on just these couple settings. They look kind of ridiculous now because everything's bouncing. And you can see, look at that cube, it's just, it's going crazy. Okay, so this is where we always have to kind of play with these things to get it to look right, the look uh, the way we want. What was that? Sorry to say, I've never actually done that. <laughs> oh, it's not doing anything. All right, that one needs a mass. <laughs> nope. Well, it is glued, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. That's wild. Let me try that. Turn gluing off. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. Well, there's just something cool on his. I just don't know why mine's not doing anything cool. Whatever. It could be. But you know that's the whole that's the whole point of the dynamics is that it's just playing and sometimes it's literally just moving it over an inch or two inches or whatever and you'll get different results and it's pretty um, fun to do that kind of thing. All right, so let me put the bullet solver more mass. There we go. and then it falls, okay? So this is where we start to play and we really start to have fun and enjoy what this is because it's basically it's all set up, okay? If you ever played Angry Birds, this is Angry Birds, like your own custom level because we have our objects, we have our birds, and we can just change stuff and modify how this whole thing is gonna happen, all right? Um, all right, so that's that. So let's save that scene as, I'm just gonna call it bullet zero two and I like to put an underscore and just call it after bullet, okay? That way I know where it was that I changed it and added bullet into that list. Because, it, like I said, at some point you may want to go back before your other stuff and get everything back to um, default, okay? For instance, if I wanted to take this block and I wanted to have more of them going back now, I can't just do that. I can't just duplicate this because it won't work. Dynamic systems have a bunch of stuff linked to them. We have to go back before we did anything, then duplicate it, and then apply all the stuff back onto those objects. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna make a new file. Sure, save it again. Yes, sir. No, it, either one should work. I think mine was a uh, binary. Yeah, you can save it as either binary or ASCII. Okay, so now the next step of this is actually the part where you get to build something um, with more of a design to it, okay? So watch a couple examples of this, and then I'm just going to let you play, and you can experiment with it, okay? Because a lot of this, think of like architecture from the Renaissance where they're just like, let's build steeples, let's build this, and try this thing, and put the weight here. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to build something and you're gonna make it bullet, and then whether you've built it good, it may just crumble right there, okay? Your goal is to build something that stands up, even after getting hit, it's still kind of structurally sound, and then you can crank up the mass and crank up the velocity and then break the hell out of it, okay? So, uh, first thing, I'm gonna start off with just like a cube, okay? Which is what we started off with before, and I'm gonna pull it off to the side here, and I'm going to um, group it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to group it and duplicate it. 
and rotate it around like uh, 12 degrees. There we go. Because 12 degrees will go into 360, and then I can just hit Shift D to get that to go all the way around. Then I can take these and duplicate them, pull them up 1.5, and then rotate these after I group it. And I'll see, am I going to get clearance? It's so close. Six degrees. And then Shift D. Go to 12 degrees. Oops. Okay, so I'm just duplicating this all the way up. Okay, now there is, I don't think it's going to work. There's such a tiny little gap right there, and there's such a little bit of overlap right there, I don't think that would really work. We'll see. Um, I can try it out, okay? So now before I do anything, I can't take this. I've grouped things and moved pivots and whatever else. It's not going to like this. If I make this bullet, it's going to freak out, okay? So I have to take everything that I've grouped, and I have to ungroup it. So I just grab everything. And I go to unparent, which ungroups everything, okay? And if I go to my outliner, I can see all these empty groups right up at the top. I can delete those. Yep, and I just have these random objects, okay? So here's how I'm going to test this is I'm going to duplicate all this stuff and just scoot it over, okay? If this one doesn't work out, delete all that stuff and scoot that guy back in. Easy way to do it. All right, so let's make this one bullet. So rigid set, there it is. Um, let's go to the bullet in the outliner. There it is. I'll add the ground plane, I'll hit play. And we'll see, oh, it just falls down. <laughs> I can, but I don't like to just glue it, I like the structure to be sound at first. Um, now the other thing I can change, remember I said that this internal fixed frame rate is like the accuracy of it? So sometimes pulling that up to 240 will tell it to do a better job of figuring out if stuff is actually colliding. At 60 it's just kind of like, yeah that's good, yeah that's good, yeah that's good. At 240 it's like, let me check. Yep, yep. So it's gonna take longer but a little bit more accurate. Okay. And you'll see it is definitely taking longer and yes, success, okay? So that worked, which is awesome. So now, let me throw a ball at it. <laughs> and again, size matters too, right? So bigger ball, little ball. You know what I meant. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Let's go with initial velocity in the z direction, negative 50. Let's give it a mass. All right. Let's throw it. Oops. I want to make sure I take that uh, shape. It's not going to be a huge deal, but I want to make it a sphere anyway. and then it just kind of collapses. Okay, so obviously that one worked. That is a viable structure. Um, some people like to make structures inside of structures. So I could have had this thing going on the outside, a different structure going on the inside, another structure going on the inside of that. Uh, I'll just save this as cool number one. All right, so let's try something else. So I'm gonna start off this one with a cube like I did last time. Uh, but this one, I'm going to just kind of scale this piece here. I'm going to duplicate it. Let me pull it here like this. And I'm kind of eyeballing the numbers now, and then I can just adjust it. So I know that's going to be one point. Nope. I'm going to move my pivot. And snap that there, good. And then duplicate this, move the pivot down here. There we go. All right, so I have this, and then I'm going to 
group it, duplicate it, and scoot it down. Come on. Oh. So I duplicated it and it didn't go, so I'm going to do that again. Duplicate, scoot it over. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, there we go. Okay, so you see how I'm building this little structure that this thing is going to sit on. I grab all this. I'm going to group that. I'm going to put the pivot here. Oops, sorry, here. And duplicate and scoot it up. I didn't break it, it's thinking. It didn't work though. See, it didn't. No, it's thinking still. There we go. Okay. So now in this case, it worked. Obviously, this is pretty slow, right? Because I've already. I've just duplicated stuff, and it's kind of slow, but um, I can obviously fix that. Now, I want to look at this and see if there's anything hanging off the edge that may need to get fixed. So I don't really like this side here. What side was that? this side here so I may want to just go through and delete this just because it's open oops I deleted too much there we go okay so that's pretty much it I think that might be hanging off all right I'll just leave it and we'll just see what happens okay so now before I do this um, because I scale these objects, it doesn't like scaled objects, okay? So Bullet does not like scaled objects. It'll revert the object back to its original state if I lay, leave it as a scaled object, okay? I just want to delete my groups first. There, I want to grab all these and I want to unparent them. And you can see it's just going to take some time to set this stuff up, so you got to be very kind of picky about how you're doing it. There we go. Okay, so we can get rid of these. All right, cool. So now I'm going to take all of these objects, and I'm going to center pivot them. Okay, because I moved the pivots, I want to put the pivots back to the center points. Okay. And then because I scaled them, you can see this one scaled 0 0.096. I need to freeze the transform on the scale. So I go to Modify, Freeze, Option Box. And I just do the scale. If I do Translates and Rotates, it screws it up. Okay, so just scale, freeze. Okay, so then it's going to freeze the scales. Then I could save as... I can duplicate this and scoot it over too. But again, look how long it's taking for this kind of stuff. You really have to have patience when you want to be this intricate with your um, details. Because I just duplicated 18,228 cubes. <clears throat> so obviously that's a lot of stuff that's going to be colliding. And then when I hit the play button, that's a lot of calculation of you know hitting it and whatever else. All right, so now let's just see this, and Maya will probably explode. We'll find out. The one that I showed in the example was created in a similar fashion. Maybe I didn't use as many. Uh, Bullet did that. Yep. And it has to go through the process. It takes all these cubes, and it actually puts them into its own object, makes them a bullet rigid set, makes the bullet solver, connects all these things together. So there's a lot of stuff that it's doing times 18,000. So it actually, that was pretty quick for 18,000 times it was doing that. So now let's go to our bullet way down here. And we'll make sure the ground plane's on. Does that matter on how many objects it is or how many powers you have it? How many objects it is. The polygons don't matter so much in this kind of case. It's only when we're colliding things that it's going to take a little bit more. So now we hit play. I can't see it because my outline is in the way. 
It looks like it's moving. I know, it's ridiculous. Okay. So it definitely is working, and it doesn't look like it's freaking out because things are just falling down. They're not exploding. If stuff was colliding and stuff was intersecting itself, it would explode. And I'm sure some of you at one point will see the explosion happen. The only fix to delete and rebuild. Okay. Um, so it is falling. I could again crank this up. I could again make whatever happen. You know, the ball hit it, explode. You get the idea. Okay. Make the ball go inside. Hit it from the bottom. Oh, explode? No, no, no. If we were doing that, we would just kind of time it, and we would animate that explosion happening. Sometimes we have to kind of fake that kind of stuff. Um, so we would have, like I said, a ball from the bottom kind of coming up and going like that. Okay, so you could have the ball go in and things just kind of fall, and then another ball come up from the bottom and then pff, knock everything out. Now I just hit save. I thought I did anyway. All right, cool. Now, I didn't save those as just because I'm showing them. I don't really care about them. But typically, before we do anything, we would save it as a new name and let it do its thing. Okay. So then some of the other designs, just so you can see um, different ways that you can kind of approach this, is I've used cubes so far, but you can also use like cylinders. So I can grab this, and I can scale this down, and I can pull that out and set that on top of it. And then grab this whole setup here. And I'm not being clean with this. I'm just so I can show you it. You can do stuff like that. And obviously this would fall down too. And it may look kind of cool. Okay. Now anything that you do. We want to keep in mind the rendering of it. Okay. So looking at these. Look how blocky and ugly those things look. You may want to smooth this whole thing out. Add some more divisions going around it before you get into the knocking it down stage or before you get into converting it because once it's converted and once it's dynamic you really can't go back to do that okay one of the cool things about Houdini is when in Houdini all this stuff is set up in a, a node based graph so up here is your initial shape and then there's a duplicate and then there's this bullet thing and you can go all the way back to that front one and change it and it'll trickle those changes down okay so in Maya, it doesn't do that. Okay, but just so you're aware of it, that's stuff you have to keep in mind. So think of different designs you want to do. Play with some different things. Just try stuff out and have fun. That's the point of all this is that you should be able to get in there, create some decent stuff, and just have fun with it, just knocking things down. Okay? When we come in on class uh, for Wednesday, try to have a simulation ready to go. Okay? Meaning that when we hit play on yours, it hits, things fall apart, and we're good to go on to the next step of shading, lighting, camera, uh, and rendering stuff out. Okay, because it's not simply a matter of hitting render. If we were to go back and set up our render settings and say render this, we would get nothing. Okay, we have to do another step in there that I'm saving. So if you want to hear it, you have to come back. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, once you're done for the day, you want to back up your stuff. Okay, if you're still working today, which most of you probably will, um, you have your 2550 folder, make sure you back up your 2550 folder. You have on your P drive, you have your 2016 folder. There's no X64 anymore, it's just 2016. So back up that 2016 folder, that's your preferences. Okay, so we would just copy this. Let me close my Maya so you can see it. So I would take my 2016 folder, there it goes, and I would cut it, and I would go into my 2550 folder, and I would just paste that 2016 folder, okay? That way I have my preferences. Not that we set up anything crazy, but we still have them. And then we would just back up this whole folder to your thumb drive or to your Dropbox account or wherever it is you're backing your stuff up to, okay? Any questions on what's going to be ready for next week? Yes, ma'am. Are you 